civilization that's 5,000 years, 10,000, 20,000, or 100,000 years more advanced than us, right? They're not going to maybe have, because they didn't grow up like we did. They didn't grow up like you did or how your mom and dad grew up. So they might not have any compassion because we don't even know how they, they, they are formed. Are they formed by having a sex act? Are they formed by, you know, uh, by DNA, you know, uh, or whatever? Uh, I just don't think they're going to have the same feelings that us humans have. So that compassion towards love and caring, I don't maybe see them having it. The same way, like I said to to um, Charles last night, right? You walk out of your front room door, right, to go get in your car. Do you think about all those ants and little insects that you step on and kill? Right. You don't think anything of it, do you? No, no, we're not even aware of all those uh, minuscule light forms that are around us. Um, You're right. So I, I say to you, you know how maybe that when people say that these aliens have compassion and love, Maybe they're not capable of uh, understanding what our compassion and love is. They might just look at us the same way as you look at, well, whatever, that lamb or that uh, fish you just caught. I mean, they, we might just be nothing more than a subject to them. Yeah, and or uh, like the famous uh, Twilight Zone episode, uh, Serving Man, uh, maybe a tasty nibble or two. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, again, you know, I was talking last night in the Amazon. Now, I, I'm going to send you some pictures over here later this week uh, or get them to you one way or another. Uh, I have some pictures of abductions that, uh, you know, went bad where they were mutilated. Now, I'm not talking about goats. I'm not talking about, you know, bulls or cows. I'm talking humans. In the Amazon, South America, where they were abducted and mutilated the same way the cattle were. Now, I can't see uh, out in the middle of the Amazon, right? Uh, Or wherever, uh, abduction taking place and mutilated where certain organs were removed in a a, a, better than a hospital setting. In other words, better than laser technology to remove the organs. Now, that's what I'm saying is really eerie. So that kind of makes me wonder, you know, I don't know how many different species. There could be thousands of species of aliens for all these, you know, tens of thousands a year visiting us. We don't know. You know, we have to have an open eye because I'll be honest with you. Somebody has to be a big dumb shit. And I'm sorry I use the word dumb shit out here to think (laughs) that we're the only planet out there in all the solar systems that have life that developed our technology. I hate to say it. Our technology to an alien would be no more than that ant that makes his little colony in the ground. Yes. Matter of fact, uh, the new uh, dramatic television series Project Blue Book that is coming out January 11th. Um, the famous quote from Dr. J. Allen Hynek in that trailer that you'll see on the internet is the prob- he says the probability uh, of this planet uh, holding the only life in the universe is zero. Oh, yeah. Now, going back to these abductions of humans. Okay, I can see a medical team going out into the Amazon and removing tongues, hearts, uh, sex glands with a laser accuracy or better with no blood. The same thing as cattle. And that has been pretty much kept in this country quiet. Yes. Matter of fact, there's the famous uh, case in Brazil as well that you're talking about the same thing. Oh, yeah. I, I have the pictures of the, the one in Brazil. I got some uh, pictures of uh, Amazon uh, that you look at it. I actually, when I got them sent over by uh, this individual, 
that, uh, and I can say this individual worked for the government for 30 years before he retired. Uh, Whoa. Uh, and it starts with a C, uh, the organization. And I'll ah. tell you, when I saw the pictures, when he sent them over to me, I went into the bathroom and threw up. That's Oh, man. That's how sick I got when I saw it. Because it really opened my eyes up. Because I know this; these pictures weren't faked. They, you know, they were legit pictures. Yeah, yeah. It just gives you pause to think about what's going on out there. And uh, indeed, even if there are uh, benevolent aliens out there, are they all the same way? Obviously, uh, we have a lot of diversity on our planet. Just think what the universe has as far as diversity. Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to go in one step farther. I'll say this, okay? You, you let's say somebody dies, right? It doesn't take long, if, especially in 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 a warm climate, especially more. You're going to have insect eggs laid on you, mainly fly eggs, and that's how they crack a lot of you know homicides is because they can determine how long somebody's been dead. Because of the yeah. generation of uh, larva and the the flies that come and gone uh, on the you know deceased, in these cases there was no insects, no eggs, no nothing, and no blood, no anything, and that is what is eerie, and no signs of any struggle, no nothing, no, uh, you know, in in the one picture I have, there's the body, his footprints where all of a sudden where whatever it stopped and here's the body, but no other footprints, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the, uh, the cattle, uh, carcasses that are, uh, dropped in the middle, in the middle of a pasture. There's no kind of evidence around it that anyone was there. Yeah. And that's when I get back to you, the people have gone missing, you know, the people who got in their car took off and never were heard of again. Or the people who gone into the forest of over 14,000 people since 1900 had gone into a U.S. forest, not counting uh, the forest up in Canada or anywhere else. It just vanished. Now, some of them, like I said before to you, fell off a cliff, fell in a river, you know, died of a heart attack, got shot by a hunter, but not 14,000 of them. Yeah. Yeah, David David Polites's four one one book series tells us all about that. It's terrible. Yeah, well, it just again the reason why I'm saying this. There's a connection. You go into Brazil, you go into South America, you go to the Amazon. Okay, it's secluded areas. Yeah, yeah, secluded areas and uh, the national parks. Uh, are kind of secluded areas in our neck of the woods as well. Oh, it is. Because you go out, you know, uh, <laughs> unless you go to a normal campground where there's, you know, 100 people camping. But if you go off the trails, I mean, even some of the trails, you go park your car, you know, you think yeah. when you put your name down and put it in that little box, they they don't even check it really. Other They don't know where you went and when you went. And, you know, they don't even check to see what happened to you. And, and it has just been so many, and, and it just makes my mind wonder if you connect the dots. If you wanted to abduct people for experimentation, what better place to do it is secluded areas. Yes. And uh, I've heard you don't want to ever be the first person in line up the trail or the last. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You want to be in the middle, I would think, you know, because it seems like <laughs> it, the people that disappear are the ones walking a little bit slower and back or the ones that go farther. Yeah, the ones that run ahead, you know, and you, they don't see them again. Oh, that's ter- not not only uh, adults, but children alike. Uh, it's just terrible to, to think that that's going on. Well, it makes me wonder what is going on, and it makes me wonder why even the Park Service police you know, don't keep really records of it for some reason or won't release it. it. It's other things going on. You know, for a long time, I started blaming, oh, maybe it's Bigfoot. But then, you know, doing this show the last 14 months and talking about UFOs and abductions and all this other stuff, I started coming to a conclusion, especially when uh, this person sent this over, these images over to me. 
And, uh, you know, they did a massive uh, uh, search trying to put the, the information together, what I was told, and they couldn't come up with any answers. So, I mean, you know, it's pretty interesting when we sent a team uh, to the jungles from our country to investigate, you know, the uh, scene where somebody, you know, was found uh, with all these parts missing and and uh, no blood and, 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 and just no signs like the heart removed, for example, without any way to remove it. It was just gone and things, weird things. Yes. Yeah, definitely. There's the famous story in the United States of uh, Todd Sees, S-E-E-S, who was uh, found mutilated as well uh, in the Midwest, actually. He was a deer hunter who uh, just uh, took his ATV up uh, into the hills around his own house and uh, was uh, found uh, the next day very close to his house, even though he had gone a couple miles up the trail, um, and uh, his body was totally mutilated. Uh, His boot, by the way, one of his uh, boots he was wearing was found 70 feet up in a pine tree. Yeah, I wonder how that got up there. Yeah. Maybe it's when his body was dropped down, it, it, it ended up on the pine tree. Yep, yep. Well, it seems like when they're done doing their examination, you know, they they really don't care. They just look at us as nothing more than a carcass. I mean, the same with the cattle, the same with the, the, the humans uh, that have been abducted that way. And maybe the people who are actually survived the abduction are the lucky ones because, you know, they, they, their memory has been erased. Now, there's one thing I'm going to mention to you. I, I mentioned to Troy that you might want to do is... You know, maybe, maybe because we're finding out your boots magnetized on the same side as your your wrist and all this stuff. Have you ever thought uh, of, you know, recording yourself while you sleep at night, you know, with your, uh, you know, your camera on your computer, you know, do a video or whatever and just see if anything strange is going on or you're talking strange at night or, you know, if you disappear or anything or that is unaccountable. Uh, Unaccountable. Yes. Yeah, I I have thought of that. Matter of fact, I'm rethinking that now, given the fact that, as Troy mentioned to you, um, uh, my watch uh, was glowing again uh, not more than a week ago uh, in the middle of the night, which should not have happened. You know, normally I'll have to get up uh, once a night with my aging prostate, you know, to go to the bathroom. Uh, And normally my watch, you can't even tell what time it is by then. Uh, and one night last week, my watch was glowing like a son of a gun again. Uh, so I've, it's kind of prompting me to do that. I, I do have uh, some some webcams I might be able to punch in uh, to do that with, uh, to record what's going on. Uh, hopefully they can record in low light. Well, I don't know. You know, maybe leave a nightlight on or something. I, I don't know. I just would, it's just an idea. I mean, you know, I... Again, you know, I don't know how old your watch is, but the older those watches get, you know, back back in, you know, in the 60s and 50s, you know, those watches actually weren't phosphorus coated. They were irradiated. So they would glow no matter what. You didn't have to charge them. They just or if you buy a Russian watch, one of the old vintage ones, they glow, too. But, yeah. you know, all the newer stuff because of they they don't want to kill people. Uh, and because of laws and passed, it's it's all done with phosphorus uh, coating. So, you know, they charge up the light. They hold it for, you know, the energy for a little time and they slowly release it. And as it releases, they get darker. They don't get certainly they don't get brighter. And, you know, in, in the case of, you know, of it brightening up a second time or whatever, you know, if the lights weren't. And even if you, 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 honestly, if you take your watch at night and just turn the light on for a second or two, okay, it's not going to hold the charge that long. You know, I remember when I grew up, I had alarm clock as phosphorus coated, you know, that sucker, you'd have to have the light on for about 20, 30 minutes to get a good charge. And it would maybe last about an hour and then it would go dim and that would be the end of it. Yeah. And I even experimented the other night uh, after this uh, second uh, event 
of my watch glowing, I decided, well, I'm going to put my watch on my watch.